Garden Evolver, cherisher, sustainer, nurturer of everything in existence. He has united the hearts of the believers with Al Islam, and he has obligated us to remain united and forbidden that we become separated in his book, which is Most High. We witness that none deserves worship except God, who's one alone, having no partners, having no associates. There is nothing like or comparable to him. And we witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and his messenger. And what follows thereafter of that salutation, I advise you as well as I advise myself to fear Allah and thereafter be obedient to him. We thank Allah for giving us another day. For every day represents another opportunity. Our topic for today is the Quran, the guidance counselor. The Quran, the guidance counselor. And we're introduced to this in Al Fatiha. In Al Fatiha. If you think about Al Fatiha, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahmanir Rahim, Malik Yomidin, Yakin Abudu wa Yakin Astain, Ihdin al Sirat al Mustaqeen. The only request. In Al Fatiha. This is the only request. And we know that Al Fatiha Al Fatiha is called Umur Umul Quran. The mother of the book or the, the essence, the, that which contains the essence of the Quran. So Al Fatiha has the logic. It, 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 if you read Al-Fatiha, you will see what the, the, the essence of the Qur'an in this ayah, in this surah, I'm sorry. And the only thing we ask for, إِحْدِنَا صِرَاتِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ إِحْدِنَا صِرَاتِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us, hudan. Guide us, to give us guidance. We also see this word hudan in the Quran, in Surah A'la, and other places, where he says, Sabbi hisma rabbi kal a'la, glorify the name of your guardian Lord the Most High, alladhi khalaqa fasawwa. He is the one that created you and gave you shape, alladhi qaddara fahada. And he is the one that ordained things and gave you guidance. As human beings, we often look for guidance. Just think about your own life. And how many times in your day-to-day -day life, when you face circumstances and situations for which you need guidance. Okay? Now most of us nowadays, we, just, we use our cell phone whenever we're trying to get any place. We, we put it on our GPS. And most of us today, without a GPS, we'd be lost. And there's some, some younger children, they don't, they, don't, they don't know how to use maps. Because their whole life has been centered around a GPS. Okay? It's a guidance. Okay? It's a guidance system. It's a way to guide you. So in life, we need guidance. Especially when we're faced with circumstances that one, we're unsure of, two, that we lack knowledge about, three, where we don't want to make error and we don't want to make mistakes. So our dua, our dua in Al-Fatiha is ihdina sirat mustaqim guide us on the straight path. And the first thing to notice about this dua is this dua is not selfish. It's not selfish. You don't say ihdini. Ihdini. Ihdinis sirat mustaqim. You could say that. Somebody could say that. Guide me. If I said ihdini, it would be singular. 
me. But we don't say that, we say ihdinas, guide us to the straight path. Indicating the importance of the group, of the, of the congregation, of the masses. That our prayer, our dua for guidance, and the Quran as a book of guidance, is not a book of guidance just to one or two individuals. The Quran is a book of guidance to humanity, and even more in particular to those who fear God. This is the book. Actually, that is the book. Thalika is pointing at something. If I, if I say, if I say hadha, that would be this. Hadihi or hadha, that would be this. Thalika, you're pointing at something. Thalika al kitabu la rayba fi hudalil mutaqeen. That is the book in it, guidance for those who fear God. And guidance I want to give to you as an acronym of eight things that the Quran offers you. In English, guidance. As an acronym for eight things the Quran offers you. Number one, it offers you guidance. Number two, it offers you understanding or gives you understanding. Three, it gives you insight. It gives you insight. D, it gives you determination. It gives you Determination, I'm sorry. It gives you definition. It gives you definition. A, it helps you appreciate things. It helps you have the proper appreciation. N, it gives you a notification. It gives you a notification. C, it teaches you how to cultivate. It teaches you how to cultivate. And E, it brings you to human excellence. It brings you to human excellence. So first, what do we need guidance on? How to be a human being. First, first. That's the first thing we need guidance in in our lives. Many of us, before God guided us to the Quran and the life example of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, born Muslim or not born Muslim. When you're born Muslim, you still have to be guided. Just look in the world right now. Whole lot of people born Muslim have names that uh, have Quran, uh, the Quran as their origin, can trace Islam in their family for centuries, and their behavior is not reflective of human decency. Their behavior and their expression is not in line with the best life for the human being. So the Quran teaches us how to be human. And those of us who weren't born Muslim, think where you were 15, 20 years ago. Now, if you were born Muslim, I'm gonna give you, all of us that were born Muslim, we get a benefit of the doubt. We get a benefit of doubt. And some of you who weren't born Muslim, you were decent human beings before you ever accepted Islam. The only thing that was wrong was your theology. But your moral life and your behavior was excellent. Let's not assume that everybody who converted was a savage or some uncivilized person before they converted to Islam. We see that in Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, decent human being. We see this in Abu Bakr, decent human being. We see this in Bilal, 
decent human being. We see this in many of the companions of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and many people who converted to Islam. As a matter of fact, there are some of you who converted to Islam that your behavior was more reflective of human beings, of decent human beings, than, than many of us who were born Muslim. And even today, your, reflect, your, your behavior was more reflective of decent human behavior before you became Muslim than many today. And the only thing, and some of you were not even mushriks. We make that assumption too. We make the assumption that everybody that converted to Islam, uh, for some reason, before they accepted Islam, they were polytheists. Many of you never believed in Christianity or uh, whatever religion you were raised in. You were just going along with the motions until you saw a, a way of life in it. It was a logic of the purity of faith. And the first thing Islam calls you to is to be a better human being. Go back and read what those early ayah in the Quran were about. Go back and read what the early revelations were about. They weren't about law. I mean civil law. Well, you can, you can interpret them as civil law. They were about universal human principles. Universal human principles. Don't oppress another person. Don't murder and kill another person. Don't kill individuals because you devalue their, their, their gender, their biological uh, sex. Okay? These were many of the early ayahs in the Quran calling you to reflect on your behavior and asking you, is your behavior what would be expected of a decent human being? And, the, and, and another emphasis of those early ayah of Quran and surah of Quran was for you to build a relationship with God. You will never understand in full what it means for you to be a human being if you don't build a relationship with the one that designed you and gave you life. Let's say I make something to operate a certain way and I give it to you. And you're using it. Or have you ever had something and you were using it wrong? Somebody said, that's not how you're supposed to use it. Then they show you how to use it. And you say, oh, this is how you're supposed to use it. This is why I wasn't getting the results out of it. That's our lives, brothers and sisters. That's our lives as human beings. God gave us these lives and we're not using them appropriately. He gave us our aspirations, we're not using them appropriately. He gave us our drives, and we're not using them appropriately. He gave us our emotions, and we're not using them appropriately. So we need guidance. Guidance. A second thing. I won't say the second thing. We can't number the things the Quran offers us. We can't number them. If we were to sit down and try to write down all the blessings of the Quran, we can't number them. We don't even understand the Quran fully yet. Now, I know some people will tell you they fully understand it. They have their, their, their upon the haq. They have, they have, some people call themselves Shaykhul Islam. The Shaykh of Islam is Shaykhul Shuyukh. The Shaykh of all Shaykhs, right? These titles that we give each other, right? We don't fully understand the Quran. The, Allah says in Quran, and of the knowledge, mankind has only been given a little. And that was just as true today, it's just as true today as it was 1400 years ago. And look how much more we know today compared to what we knew 1400 years ago. So we're still given a little. The Quran comes to give us understanding. You know, understand is a word. If, 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 I, if I split it apart, I can make it two words, right? Under and stand. 
right. 